Hi everybody and welcome to a new screencast uh, by Magnus Thor. This time I'm going to show you how you build a one-to-many participant video conference using my new framework called Thor.io. Um, Thor.io is a open source project that enables you to build real-time application. Uh, everything from raw sockets to web sockets to WebRTC applications. Uh, I also implemented a small, a two small client libraries, um, one client library for working with WebSockets primarily, and one framework for, or a client library for building WebRTC stuff, quite similar to the stuff that I have shown on my YouTube channel earlier. Um, those things were built on xsockets.net, uh, but these things are based on Thor.io, which is based on Node, runs on Node, it's written in TypeScript. Uh, so just navigate to my GitHub um, account, uh, Magnus Thor, and you navigate to the repo named Thor IOV next uh, and clone or download. Um, I've already done this. Um, I'm using Visual Studio Code on my machine. So start by showing what you get. Um, set on some windows here. Awesome. Yeah, uh, this is what you get from um, the GitHub repo. Um, it contains examples and source code for both the server and the client and the WebRTC libraries. You will find the um, source code for Thor.io in source um, and um, Thor.io.ts, which is the site TypeScript file. Uh, the other files are transpiled uh, using the studio code to JavaScript, ECMAScript 5, yes 5. So, let's look at this. Uh, of course, I have a server.js, which runs my node process. I'm using Express to host the static files, such as CSS, JavaScript, and etc. And et uh, I also use Express WebSockets. Uh, uh, as you see here, I'm um, including or you know, requiring Express, setting up some stuff. I also requiring Thor IO, um, and I also load those three files uh, which are controllers that the client can connect to uh, and send data in real time. Um, we are looking at the broker in this screencast. The broker is the controller that enables pairs to connect to each other. It uh, delivers the negotiation functionality needed to uh, establish a pair connection. Um, I hooked those up in an array, uh, create a new instance of the Thor IO engine as you see here and I pass the controllers. Uh, then there's some express stuff here, setting up some, some routes, etc. Um, here at line 26, you see I'm routing or grabbing the WebSocket request. Um, and when I have a request on a WebSocket uh, or a handshake, I will add this connection to Thor IO using just add connection and pass the WebSocket. That's it's pretty much the thing you need to set up the Thor IO engine or server. Uh, further on, you need to go to um, the controller then. Uh, I was mentioning the broker controller, uh, which is located in the example folder. So let's navigate there and look at the TypeScript file. Uh, this broker is a Thor controller, as I mentioned. Um, and <coughs> what it does is solves the negotiation and signaling things needed to establish a pair connection. Um, I also have a instant message class here, which enables which enables users to send small small chat messages in the in the in the conference. Um, then I have a model for pair connections and model for signals. Uh, it ain't much. Um, as you see here, I'm exporting a class named Broker Controller, which extends the Thor IO controller. Um, I have a couple of uh, properties: uh, a pair connection. Uh, for this current user or for this particular instance of the broker or the controller. Uh, I have a local pair ID. I have a method for creating unique uh, IDs. Um, as you see here, I'm calling super in the constructor here as we need to pass some information or, or, or dependencies to the FOIA controller. Um, when a client connects, um, the JavaScript client, uh, the WebRTC client connects, we create a new instance of a pair connection. We just generate a random ID. And this first argument is the room number or the, the room name. Uh, in 
My solution is called context. Context is like a phone number you can connect to a room or a surface. Uh, as long as two pair connections or clients has the same uh, context, they're able to, to talk to each other. Um, then I pass the class ID to know uh, the unique identity of this client creating this pair. Um, then I'm calling uh, a method called invoke, uh, which is derived from the Thorio controller. Uh, calling invoke from the controller will send uh, this pair object to the client uh, on the topic context created. Further on, uh, there's a method here called instant message. Uh, as you see, there's also a decorator here. Um, this decorator is something that I implemented because um, you need to be able to tell the, the client or controller which methods that can be invoked from the client. Um, if you say false, uh, you can't invoke the method from the client, etc. Uh, so this just um, takes the data that comes in, uh, filters out uh, based on an expression, to ensure that you're targeting users in the same room or context. Uh, instead of calling invoke and calling invoke to, uh, which means that this message will send to each and every client within the same context based on the expression uh, on the topic of instant message. Uh, further on, I have a change context method, which the client also can invoke. Uh, when If you want to uh, change rooms or context, you just invoke this method from the client. Uh, by saying um, set a new uh, set a new number. Sorry, there's a police car outside here. Um, currently in the park doing this screencast. Uh, sorry for coming off topic. Uh, the next method is context signal, which is a method that the client invokes. Um, I think it's special. It's the method that takes care of the signaling and ensures that. Uh, the ICE candidates and offers and answers from the WebRTC um, uh, APIs are sent and targeted to, to each and every user uh, needed to connect to. <coughs> and when you call uh, Context Connect, uh, it's when you start your conference, uh, just give me a use, uh, list of users to connect to, can be one or many, and send them back to the client using Invoke uh, on the topic of Context uh, Connect 2. Uh, that is pretty much um, the broker itself um, that takes care of the signaling. It's quite similar to the things uh, that I did in, in XSockets a couple of years ago, together with my, my, my former colleague Ulf Björklund, um, which is a re really astute guy, by the way. Uh, um, back to the, to the example now. Um, of course, we need a client. This is the server. Uh, I'll show you how you're using the server.js file to hook up the, the Thor IO stuff and then how to uh, briefly build a controller. So look, let's look at the test files here. Uh, we have a P2P uh, file here, which is the WebRTC conference. First of all, we have some style sheets. I'm um, doing uh, some kind of uh, welcome splashy thing on the top. Uh, I also have a call button here, which actually starts the conference. Uh, there's a video element here that will represents my local video stream, which is muted. Um, there's a one element uh, that covers the whole page, which is a full screen video. So uh, the remote part you select, or uh, the other part of the, uh, the other part, uh, member of the conference is shown in full screen. And there's a, also a list of videos, if there are one too many uh, remote uh, participants, remote pairs, that will be listed in this video element, uh, div, div tag called ID uh, videos. And in the footer we have the instant messages and some things, just an input field um, where you can type in stuff and press enter and it is sent to the users. Uh, there's pretty much the thing, I'm using the adapter from Google here to ensure the uh, cross-browser functionality of the WebRTC APIs. Uh, I'm using the Thor IO client, which is also written in TypeScript. Um, there's some other things here for selecting DOM elements, creating video elements in the page, um, just let's look at these things. Um, there's an event listener for DOM uh, content loaded. Uh, we'll create a new instance of the um, Thor IO client factory. Uh, I point out uh, the endpoint or the, the server, the WebSocket. And I also pass an array here, as you see, as the second argument. Uh, that's the controllers you want to connect to. Um, broker here is the alias set by a decorator on the controller class. Uh, I think I forgot to, to show you that 
but there is a, a controller properties decorator you decorate the class with. Uh, so it's the name of the of the actual controller you need to, to connect to. And when you are uh, have a connection, the client library will throw an, an open event as you see here and give you a, a instance or a channel to the server side controller, which you can add subscriptions to. You can invoke, you can listen to incoming messages, you can set properties and get properties from the, 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 the server side controller or, or in this case the broker controller. I set up some constraints here for the get user media stuff and querying 720p audio, um, saying, okay, give me uh, some media here. Uh, using those constraints, I will get a stream. We'll add these streams to the RTC library here, uh, which I also create up here on line 71, as you see. I'm creating a, uh, an instance of the WebRTC uh, 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 libraries of Thor.io. Uh, I also attach this video stream to the local uh, video element um, in the page. Um, I also have an event listener for call. I show you the call button in the page. When you press call, I will say that, okay, invoke this method on the server. Uh, briefly describe the context connect thingy. Uh, and it invokes uh, by calling rocket channel invoke, inv invokes the method on the server. Um, and the server will, of course, send back some information. In this case, when we call context connect, um, it will throw an event called um, uh, or invoke. Uh, send us a message on the context connect, uh, connect to topic. When we get a pair, a list of pairs back, I ask you tell the RTC library to connect to those pairs. It can be one or many. Um, and there's also some uh, other things here that deals with uh, for this, for instance, when we got a remote stream, we need to hide uh, the welcome thingy I showed you, and we need to add yet another video element to the to the list of remote pairs. Etc. Uh, and this is the last thing uh, I can explain, which is the instant message thing. Um, when I receive a message, I just create a new element in this div tag in the footer. And up here, you can also briefly look at um, if I do a key up and the character code is 13 for a new line, just invoke the instant message um, method on the server side, which will send it to the participants in, the, in this particular conference. So, um, not to be uh, too too long in this um, uh, short screencast, I will try if it works. Um, we just navigate to um, localhost, uh, peer-to-peer in the client folder. Um, you will probably see a small video down to the right. Um, uh, as I see, it also creates a hash link here. That's the random string I generate and send out from the broker. And this is also the room number, uh, room names. So just by copying this URL um, and opening a new window, um, let's make it smaller uh, like this and paste it and go back. And uh, you will see that we have two uh, browser windows now. One is incognito, one is uh, uh, also <laughs> incognito window, so, sorry. Um, and then we start the conference. Um, and in this case, you will see that we have um, loads of echo, uh, but you will have two persons, the same guy. Um, okay, you pretty much get the thing. Sorry. So, uh, that's pretty much the thing. This is extremely easy to come get, getting started with. Um, you also have uh, the possibility to add more methods, more functionality to your broker controller or implement a controller of, of your own for enabling file sharing, a more sophisticated chat, uh, etc. Um, whatever you want. Uh, it's easy to do. It reminds you of other WebRTC frameworks, X sockets and things. Um, as I told you, Thorio started out as an experiment. Um, first of all, I made a JavaScript version and then I ported the things to TypeScript. Uh, and the TypeScript version is the Thor IO uh, VNX version. Uh, thank you for listening, and hopefully, I will be com coming back in a few days or a few weeks with a new screencast. Enjoy the summer. <laughs>